So in this problem, uh, we have a design and we need to find the maximum force P. Usually it's more like we know the force P and we want to pick the design, but it's easier to know the design and find the force P. So let's do that. And um, this is a good one because it combines the normal stress, tensile stress, the shearing stress in the pin, and also uh, the bearing stress inside uh, the hole of in the bar. So let's start by number one question. What is the maximum allowable tensile stress for the bar if sigma equal 8 in KSI? So we are in the bar, and the question to start with is where is the smallest area of the bar? If we cut there, okay, if we cut inside there, the area will be just W times H. Okay? But if we cut inside the bar where there is the pin, there is a hole there. So let's call that section AA. If we look at AA, the section looks like this. Because there is a pin in the middle. So the total 8 is the 8 of the bar that is 1.5 but we need to remove the diameter inside so minus the uh, 0 0.5 inside and the width of uh, the bar is one quarter okay so now that we have the area we can apply our formula so for number one the sigma equal the force normal force divided by the area so we will have the p max that is equal to the sigma times the area so p max equal the sigma is in this case maximum tensile stress 18 18 um, that's kilo pound per square inch so uh, 18,000 times the area in inch that will be the 8 1.5 minus the all in the middle 0 0.5 and time one quarter the width. So the P max equal, if we multiply all, all of this, 4.5, 4, um, 0.5, oh my God, pound, or 4.5 kilo pound. So this is if we look at the bar, okay? The normal stress in the bar. Number two, let's look at the uh, maximum sharing stress in the pin. Sharing stress in the pin. So we have the pin, we have one pin, like this, and touch, there's a force that is apply P, and if we take any section, if we cut the pin anywhere, so we cut it there, and we look at this area, the force, will be P divided by 2 and P divided by 2 on both sides. So for the shearing equal the P divided by the area. In this case, the P will be, we will have P that we need to replace by P divided by 2. So this is this P, so this is P divided by 2 divided by the area equal 2. So we have P divided by 2 equal the to max times the area. So P equal 2 times the to max times the area. And the area is the section of the pin. So let's find that. P equal, and again it's a P max, P max, uh, due to the shearing in the pin. So 2 times the max shearing stress is 14, and the area is pi times. Uh, the diameter of the pin is one half, so the radius, one quarter, square. So the P max with the shearing is 5.5 kilopond. I keep everything in kilopond in this one. I didn't even <laughs> change them for the thousand. We don't need that. Okay. And third scenario, what is now the bearing shear? the bearing stress, sorry, the bearing stress between the pin and the bar. So for this one, what we look at, number three, what we look at, oops, that will be the projection of the um, contact between the pin and the bar. 
So the bar looks like this. Oops. Okay, with a. This is the all like this with a with a pin inside. Okay. So what we use is this area there, the projection. So that will be the diameter uh, of the pin that is one point one one half, and the width that is one quarter. Okay. So we have the um, stress bearing stress max. So the T. This is the bearing equal the P divided by this area, and this is the projected area, this one. So we have P max equal to bearing time area. So P max equal the to bearing equal 31 KSI, and the area is one half time one quarter. So the P max of the bearing is 3.875 KSI. So now we have the three maximum force. Okay, we found a maximum force of 4.5 if we look at the norm maximum normal stress. We have a P of 5.5 if we look at the maximum shearing stress in the pin, and we have a P max of 3.875 if we look at uh, the maximum stress possible um, in the all, with the contact in the all. So which one is the more critical? The smallest or the largest? The smallest. So P max over all is the mean of all the P. So it will be P max equal 3.875 KSI. And I have a question in your quiz that say, what will you change to increase P? So let's look at the different scenario. I will say if scenario one, if uh, number one was your P minimum, what I will say, because the bar is like this and there's the all, um, if we don't want to change the diameter, what we can change, we can change the width of the bar. Because if we change the width of the, uh, not the width, the height of the bar, if that was scenario one, okay, if that was a normal force, if we were, uh, if the force, the P max was the smallest at the for the tensile stress in the bar, I will say increase the height of the bar because we don't change the width of the bar, we don't change the diameter of the pin, we just increase the height of the bar, and we increase the area, and then we can um, increase P. Now, if the pin was for the, uh, the pin mean was for the pin, so this one was P mean for the bar, P, mi P mean was for the pin, I will say increase the diameter of the pin. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's the only factor in our equations for the P max for the pin. And third, if the P mean is for the bearing, so for the bearing, if we look at the area that we look at is the width times the diameter, I will say increase the width of the bar. Because if we increase the B width of the bar, we increase the surface. The only other factor that we can change will be the diameter of the pin, but we don't want to change the diameter of the pin if the pin is strong enough to already hold the weight. Okay? Uh, they may have some other factor, but for this one, that will be my uh, suggestion, my design change suggestions based on which P max is the smallest in your three different calculation. So I expect you to all have the pin in that bearing. If not, for the question in the quiz, expect that. Uh, maybe with all the set of data that I provide, maybe there will be another one. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Bye-bye.